will crush disappointment and break every chain. Fall of my fear, I will turn into praise. Shake off despair as I sing out your name. A victory dance, I will dance out in faith. I will crush disappointment and break every chain. All of my fear, I will turn into praise. Shake off despair and I'll sing in your name. A victory dance, I will dance out in faith. I will crush disappointment and break every chain. All of my fear, I will turn into grace. Shake off despair as I sing out your name. A victory dance, I will sing out in faith. I will crush disappointment and break every chain. Show me one thing he can't do. Show me a mountain he can't move. He's a God of the breakthrough and anything is possible. Y'all sound real good this evening. Show me one thing he can't do. Show me a mountain he can't move. He's the God of the breakthrough, and anything is possible. Show me one thing that's too hard. Show me what else he can't fight. He's the God of and all of my fear, I will turn into praise. Shake off the spirit as I sing out your name. A victory dance, I will dance out in faith. I will crush disappointment and break every chain. All of my fear, I will turn into praise. Shake off the spirit as I sing out your praise. Victory dance, I will dance out in faith. I will crush disappointment and break every chain. All of my fear, I will turn in and grace. Shake off this fear as I sing out your name. A victory dance, I will dance out in faith. I will crush disappointment and break every chain. All of my fear, I will turn into praise. Take off this bed as I sing out your name. A victory dance, I will dance out in faith. I will crush disappointment and break every chain. 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 I will crush disappointment and break every chain and break every chain. Show me something he can't do. Show me a mountain he can't move. He's the God of the breakthrough and anything is possible. Show me one thing that's too hard. Show me what else he can't find. He's the God of the breakthrough and anything is possible. Oh. Show me one thing he can't do. Show me a mountain he can't move. He's the God of the breakthrough and anything is possible. Show me one thing that's too hard. Show me what else he can't find. He's the God of the breakthrough. Anything is possible, it's possible. Do you all believe that we serve the God of breakthrough this evening? I said, do you all believe that we serve the God of breakthrough this evening? Anything is possible. Because all of my feet, 
I will turn in the praise. Oh, all of my fear, I will turn in the praise and shake off the spirit as I sing in your name. A victory dance, I will dance out in faith. I will crush disappointment and break every chain. All of my fear, I will turn into praise and shake off the spirit as I sing out your name. A victory dance, I will dance out in faith. I will crush disappointment and break every chain. All of my fear, I will turn into praise. Shake all despair as I sing out your name. A victory dance, I will dance out in faith. I will crush disappointment and break every chain. All of my fear, I will turn into praise. Shake all despair as I sing out your name. A victory dance, I will dance out and sing. I will crush disappointment and break every chain. He will 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 break every chain. She will break every chain. He will break every chain. He's a giant slayer. He's a giant slayer. He's your giant slayer. He's your giant slayer. He will break all your chains. 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 He will break all my 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 chains. Cause he's my giant slayer. He's my giant slayer. He's my giant slayer. And he's the undefeated champion. He's my giant slayer. He's my giant slayer. He's my giant slayer. He's the undefeated champion. Cause when listen to the sound of power on my lips, Jesus defeated the darkness. He has never lost a battle. And who are you, great mountain, that you should not follow? Jesus defeated the darkness. He has never lost a battle. And so who are you, great mountain, that you should not follow? And Jesus defeated the darkness. He has never lost a battle. And he never will, he never will. 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 
And he never will, he never will And he never will, he never will Who are you, great mountain That you should not bow low Jesus defeated the darkness He has never lost a battle Come on, do you believe that he's your giant slayer? Come on, he's the giant slayer. Whatever, whatever giant you came in facing, whatever giant you came in battling, come on, he can slay that. And Christ is my firm foundation, the rock on which I stand when everything around me is shaking. I've never felt more glad that I put my faith in Jesus Cause he's never let me down He's faithful through generations So why would he fail now? He won't He Cause I've still got joy in chaos I've got peace that makes no sense When I can keep going under I'm not held by my own strength But I put my trust in Jesus Cause he's never let me down He's faithful through generations And why would he fail now? He won't He won't He won't fail joy in chaos I've got peace that makes no sense and I won't be going under I'm not held by my own strength and I put my trust in Jesus He's never let me down He's faithful So why would he fail now? He won't. He won't. He won't fail. He won't fail. He won't. He won't fail. Oh, he's never failed And rain came when blue, but my house was built on you. And I'm safe with you. I'm gonna make it through. And rain came when blue my house was built on you. I'm safe with you. I'm gonna make it through. And rain came when blue my house was built on you. And I'm safe with you, I'm gonna make it, cause 
Cause I'm gonna make it through Cause my house was built on you I'm gonna make it through Cause my house was built on you I'm gonna make it through Our house was built on you I'm gonna make it through My house was built on you And rain came when blue But my house was built on you And I'm safe with you I'm gonna make it Rain came and went blue When my house was built on you safe with you I'm gonna make it through cause I'm gonna make it through cause I'm gonna make it through cause I'm gonna make it through and I'm gonna make it through Cause I'm gonna make it Come on, let that be your encouragement this evening I'm gonna make it Oh, I'm gonna make I'm gonna make it through I'm gonna make it through I'm gonna make I'm gonna make it through I'm gonna I'm gonna make it through. I'm gonna. Cause I'm gonna make it through. Cause Christ is my firm foundation. The rock on which I stand when everything around me is shaken. I've never been more glad that I put my faith in Jesus. And he's never let me down. He's faithful through generations. So I would he felt now. He won't. I want to thank everyone who came out to join us for this special night. You all can be seated if you want. My name is Jarrett Withrow and I'm one of the leaders here. Impact Church is a proud member of City Harvest Network. A group of world changers under the spiritual calling covering of Dr. Rod Parsley. Tonight we have the honor of hearing from the General Assistant Overseer, Dr. Wendell Hutchison. So if you would turn your attention to the screens for a brief moment and um, hear this message from him. given to you through his divine will for you. The Apostle Paul, when writing his letter from Corinth, queries the Romans when he says, and how shall they preach except they be sent? As it is written, how beautiful are the feet of them that preach the gospel of peace and bring glad tidings of good things. Paul also wrote, let the elders that rule well be counted worthy of double honor, especially those who labor in word and doctrine. This day marks a meaningful milestone in the history of Impact Church and its family of spiritual leaders. 
It's an honor to share in your joy of welcoming one of God's finest young men, Pastor Isaac, along with his beautiful wife, Micah, and their precious little Easton, to lead you into your gilded future of glorious promise, a future filled with apostolic favor and Pentecostal outpouring. Impact Church, I'm so excited about your future ministry as God's church. I hear the Holy Spirit saying, Impact Church must no longer think in terms of being a local church established for a local community of people. But I'm elevating Impact to become my regional lighthouse, a city set on a hill, that people will come as far away as three states to worship, to grow in faith, and to flourish as new creation disciples. Church, because you've been obedient to the Lord's leading and faithful in your service to Him through transitions and promotions and the pandemic, because you've been sacrificial in your giving, sowing your best seeds of sacrifice into His global church, and because you've been graceful and you've allowed your founder and bishop, the Honorable Bishop David Amos, to be elevated and serve the body of Jesus Christ in an international office, God has given you Isaac, a son of legacy and an heir of promise. Isaac will lead you into a regional revival that will shake this nation for Jesus Christ. Because of your diligent pursuit of God's kingdom order and your honor for his apostolic government through the fivefold ministry, and because of your faithful commitment to raising up a new generation of leaders by investing your young people and their future in sending them to Christian colleges such as Valor Christian College to become the world changers that this broken people planet desperately needs. Because of your willingness to extend the legacy of our generation's apostolic father through the ministry of Pastor Rod Parsley, and Isaac, because you honor the fruitful labor and the love of Pastor Chuck Lawrence as your spiritual father, you carry his blessings and you represent well the rich and storied history of Christ's temple. This night, God rewards you with a double portion of his divine favor. And to pastors Kevin and Jared, Angie, David, and Sal, and the many others who have gathered together in this holy convocation, may the Lord's grace be multiplied to you as you honor his word, as you receive Pastor Isaac, and as you continue to allow God's blessings to be bestowed upon you and flow through you. On behalf of Pastor Rod Parsley and the City Harvest Network's global network of churches, we pray the Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord make his face shine upon you and be gracious to you. The Lord lift up his countenance upon you and give you peace. Number six, 24 through 26. God bless. Can we stand back on our feet as we uh, sing one more song together in worship? And King of glory, fill this place. I just want to be with you. I just want to be with you. King of glory, fill this place. I just want to be with you. I just want to be with you. Yes, the world will bow down and say you are God. And every man will bow down and say you are king. 
so let's start right now why would we wait and king of glory fill this place i just want to be with you i just want to be with you And King of glory, fill this place. I just want to be with you. I just want to be with you. And King of glory, and King of glory, fill this place. I just want to be with you, just want to be with you, yes the world, bow down and say you are God, and every man will bow down and say you are King. So let's start right now. Why would we wait? The King of glory fill this place. I just want to be with you. I just want to be with you. Glory, fill this place. I just want to be with you. I just want to be with you. I just want to be with you. King of, King of glory, fill this place. I just want to be. I just want to be with you, just want to be with you, so we'll sing hallelujah until you come again, and we'll dance in your presence until you come again. So we'll sing hallelujah until you come again. And we'll dance in your presence till you come again. So we'll sing hallelujah, sing hallelujah until you come again. Lift up the highest praise and we'll dance in your presence until you come again. And we sing hallelujah and we'll sing hallelujah until you come again. And we'll dance in your presence, we'll dance in your presence. Until you come again, so we'll sing hallelujah, sing hallelujah, until you come again. Oh, 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 oh and we'll dance in your presence until you come again. So we'll sing hallelujah. Sing hallelujah until you come again. And we'll dance in your presence, dance in your presence until you come again. Oh, and we'll dance in your presence, we'll dance in your presence 
We'll dance in your presence. 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 We will sing hallelujah. We'll 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 give you the highest praise. We'll give you the highest praise. Because you're worthy of it all. You're worthy of it all. And so, King of glory, fill this place. I just want to be with you. Just want to be with you. I just want to be with you. And King of glory and King of Glory, fill this place. I just wanna be with you. Just wanna be with you. Just wanna be with you. And we will sing hallelujah until you come again. You're worthy of it all. We will dance in your presence until you come again. We will sing hallelujah, sing hallelujah until you come again. We will dance in your presence, dance in your presence until you come again. You're worthy of it all. You're worthy of it all. For from you are all things, and to you are all things. For you deserve the glory. You're worthy of it all. From you are, to you are, to you are, for you deserve the glory, you deserve the glory. You're worthy of it, you're worthy of it all. You're worthy of it, you're worthy of it all. For from you are, for from you are all things. For you, you are all things. For you deserve the glory. One more time we sing, you're worthy of it all. For from you are all things, and to you are all you deserve the glory. You deserve the glory. One more time we sing, you're worthy, you're worthy of it all. Cause you're worthy of it all. For from you are, for from you are, and to you are all things. To you are, for from you are, for from you are, to you are all. To you are all. For from you are, for from you are, and to you are all. To you are all. For from you are, for from you. To you are all things, to you are all things, for 
Lord, you deserve, for you deserve the glory. Let's give another round of applause for these two gentlemen on the platform. Thank you so much for leading us in such beautiful worship. Thank you. We get the privilege to introduce our next speaker. I'll let you. Yes. Y'all may be seated, please. And I did say y'all. <laughs> All right. I tell you what, we are evangelizing the neighborhoods right now. Yep. Oh, come on, let's hear it even better. We got the front door open, we got the back door open. We're letting the spirit flow out of this place tonight. Amen. Thank you all for coming. Have you enjoyed yourself so far? Amen. Amen. Guys, tremendous job. Appreciate you so much. My name is David Graham, and this lovely lady beside me is Angie Campbell. You'll excuse me for a second. Part of, the, part of the reason of gray hair here. <laughs> Three years ago, our next speaker and our founder said yes to a call to plant a ministry here with no money, no congregation, and no denominational backing, a church was planted. Guess where you're sitting? That church. Because of that vision, many of us here tonight have been influenced by his his ministry, especially me. I was on staff at a local church when he was one of the youth at 14 years old that answered the first call to preach. I got to hear some of those very first few sermons. You've come a long way. <laughs> we keep it real here, so hey. Years later, he is traveling the globe with and on behalf of Dr. Rod Parsley. He serves as an ambassador of City Harvest Network. He assists in overseeing 2,000 plus churches, and he has been called one of the premier voices of our generation. We at Impact Church called him pastor. Now we call him bishop. So if you would, please help me welcome him to the platform, Bishop C. David Amos. For nearly three years, I started every service saying this, and let me say it now. Oh, don't sit down. <laughs> this is a Pentecostal church up in here tonight. He's great, and he's still greatly to be praised. And if I was you tonight, I would give him the greatest praise of your life. Because the atmosphere of expectancy is the breeding ground for a miracle. His greatest hits are not in the past, they're in the present. God is still on the throne tonight. And silence, well that's the language of defeat. But shouting, well that's the language of victory. If I was you tonight, I'd let on a great shout and let every principality in the tri-state know that the anointing of God is still right up in here in Ironton, Ohio tonight. I assure you I come tonight not with talking points for people, but with a declaration for devils. And that is this, the reality of the resurrection, that what God through the Holy Ghost gives birth to, though it might be crucified by the religious, and this church has sure had its share. But I come tonight to let you know that which is crucified, it always finds itself on the other side of a resurrection. And tonight we celebrate the resurrection of a vision. Tonight we celebrate the resurrection of Impact Church. That right when the devil 
right when the principalities that hover over this land thought they had silenced the shout in Ironton, Ohio, God found the very best. I said God found the very best. God doesn't know how to give the leftover. He knows how to give the very best. And I just believe that heaven heard the sound of the principalities that were rejoicing over what they had heard about the destiny of this church. But God said, I said God said, God said, if you think Bishop David Amos was something, just wait till you see my son, Isaac Carpenter, and his wife, Micah. For they shall raise the dead and heal the sick. For they shall lead a revival that has not been seen in generations. God said, I'm picking up the very best and planting it right here tonight. So tonight we celebrate the reality of the resurrection. Tonight we put devils on notice. We're not here playing games. We're here taking over. I said, we're not here playing games. We're here taking over tonight. Glory to God. Would you celebrate tonight? I mean, you, you don't realize ten, the significance of tonight. You don't realize just how upset hell is right now. When hell looks at what's in this room tonight, and I give God praise that I got to have any part of it. But when you look that right in front of me in Impact Church Ironton, you couldn't find a man that has impacted and influenced this region more than that of Pastor Chuck Lawrence that is right here tonight. A giant of, a giant A man that has been preserving Pentecost, a man that is raising up sons and daughters, a man's voice that goes far beyond that of Huntington, West Virginia, a man that's humble enough to walk away from the big old doors of Christ's temple in Huntington, West Virginia and walk through the little doors of Impact Church tonight knowing that God has used him to raise up a son and daughter and these little doors ain't staying little for long. All oh, hell's upset tonight. When you look over here and you see without a doubt not just one of the greatest leaders of this generation, one of the greatest leaders of any generation. A woman, I don't know a man or woman that is after God's heart more than this precious woman that I get to work with. She has impacted thousands and she's just getting started. She is the head of recruitment for that place where world changes are made. She is a spiritual mother to sons and daughters that are now serving all over the world. She is the arm of Valor Christian College. Would you honor my friend, Ms. Sharice Conley, that's in the house today. And look over here. One of the greatest worship leaders. I don't know why God hasn't just, just, just went ahead and picked you up and took you right on and said, hey, I want this up here all the time, other than the ills that's needed here on the earth. One of the most beautiful souls, that's why your voice is so beautiful, because your soul is so beautiful. Someone that's been hurt, but just got better instead of bitter. I said got better, not bitter. Somebody with a regional anointing that some backward preacher doesn't understand 
that not all anointings are meant to stay in your little house. We're the greatest worship leaders to ever, ever come out of Appalachia. Miss Kim Abbott, would you honor her? <laughs> Pastor James right up here, one of the great leaders of the kingdom, a man of tremendous legacy. Would you honor him? He walks in the room and devils begin to tremble because of the faith on the inside of him. I could go on all night. Like, what about this preacher, Pastor Tim McCoy, that is from the hills of Kentucky and preaches the uncompromisable gospel. I love you. How about some of the Valor Christian College students that are in the house? How about the former mayor and the president of the Ironton Ministerial Alliance, Katrina Keith, that is in the house tonight? I mean, come on. We might as well have a party tonight because Appalachia needs some more of God's people getting together because we are on the same team. We're not here to replace, we're here to reinforce. We're here to work together to advance the kingdom of God. Glory. I said glory. I honor my wonderful friend, Dr. Wendell Hutchins. Did you enjoy that message from him tonight? He's watching. He's been texting me all night. I love him. He's a great friend, a great mentor. And before I share and lay hands, it is the greatest honor. There's a man in my life that is, I get to call him dad. Because that's what he is to my wife and I. But to the kingdom, he's a general. A general of many, many, many generations. Ladies and gentlemen, if you'll stay standing for just a moment, and I know pastors watching tonight, Ladies and gentlemen, it's my honor to welcome by video my pastor, Dr. Rod Parsley. Hello, everybody. I'm Pastor Rod Parsley, and it is my great, great joy to remind you that Impact Church has always been an answer to my personal prayers. For years and years, I prayed for World Harvest Church to have a presence in southern Ohio, eastern Kentucky. And then comes along this Holy Ghost-filled, fire-baptized man of God, Bishop C. David Amos. A man that carried the vision that God placed in my heart into your hearts, into your lives and something supernatural was birthed. Well, in just two years, you sent 10 students to Valor Christian College where world changes are made. You supported every bridge of hope missions outreach across America and around the world. And thank you for standing with me for the Breakthrough Women's Clinic where over 14,000 babies have been saved from the American Holocaust of abortion and a whole lot more. Just a little over a year ago, you gave the gift of your tremendous pastor back to me, and he's become the ambassador of that global soul-winning network, City Harvest network. He's now serving alongside me every day, all day, working together in the great harvest fields of the world. And together, he and I prayed that God would give us another pastor that could be trusted with your hearts to carry on this great vision there in southern Ohio and eastern Kentucky, that whole region. Well, today, thank God, through the laying on of hands, 
through the passing of the sword, Bishop Amos will install one of the very best preachers to ever graduate from the hallowed halls of Valor Christian College. Now, this ministry has its very best days in front of you. Nothing you've done, nothing you're doing is as great as what you're about to do. We're going to do it all together. Myself, Bishop Amos, and your pastor. So I give my great congratulations to senior pastor Isaac Carpenter on becoming the next link of this mighty Holy Ghost legacy. Praise God. You can try to be seated. Thank you to all of the ones that helped make this dream a reality. Before I turn to scripture tonight and give a charge to this mighty, mighty man of God tonight, I also want to honor those that preserved this vision, kept things going in my absence in the in-between of my departure and before Isaac's arrival. Pastor Angie that you've seen and Pastor David. Pastor Jared that's still having a hard time just calling himself a pastor. <laughs> my friend that served with me for two decades. Gave up everything to come help plant this church. I love you, Pastor Kevin. I love you with all my heart. And to my very best friend, who it almost seems wrong to call a friend because he's really my brother that helped me in so many ways, Pastor Blake. Would you honor this wonderful, wonderful team? And of course, Elder Dale that carries that sword for me and enjoys doing it. <laughs> no anointing that is ever on the earth, ever leaves the earth. My pastor had that revelation as he was saying goodbye to a legend of the faith and then again as he was saying goodbye to his mother that no anointing that's ever on the earth ever leaves the earth. It is the responsibility of the current generation to pick up the anointing of old in order to serve the current generation. Tonight, Isaac, I come with a sword, and in a few moments, I'll lay it down, and I'll dare you by faith to pick it up. Tonight, I come to charge you to pick up the anointing of old, to pick up the anointing that can raise the dead, heal the sick, pick up the mantle tonight. Our Bible talks about Elijah and Elisha. And in 2 Kings, they had crossed over miraculously together. And Isaac, we both got here miraculously. He's a God of miracles and never, ever, ever forget it. And they're at this place together. And Elijah says to his servant Elisha, before I'm taken away from you, before I go on into my next season and leave you in your current season, what can I do for you? And Elisha was just bold enough to say, here's what I'd like. A double portion. Or one translation says, double of the inheritance of your spirit. Now, Elisha, like me, was a bald man. And Elijah was a hairy man. He could have said, give me some of that hair. He could have said, give me some of your money, some of your resources. But he was a man after God's own heart. And he said, before you depart, I want a double portion. I want to inherit double of everything you ever had. And tonight, as I depart, the greatest thing I could do for you is get Miss Sharice Conley with me tonight, to get Pastor Chuck with me tonight, for us to lay our hands and to ask God to give you double of everything we've ever received. 
for the hundreds of souls that we've received in the kingdom, that you receive thousands. In the last year, 10 people on the road have got up from wheelchairs and walked and never returned to the wheelchair. For you, may it be a 100 that get up out of the wheelchairs in this very building. We're praying and believing that you're about to pick up a mantle and get a double portion. For the times, Pastor Isaac, that I didn't know how to keep the lights on, for the Sundays that the offerings were never more than $7. But on a resurrection seed in Columbus, I sold my best, came back to this church, and the offering in one Sunday was $24,000. I'm believing in your first year, you're going to get your $50,000 sown into this ministry because you're getting double. But you got to pick it up. He said... Give me double of your spirit because it's the spirit of a man. This is why many preachers can't perform miracles. He said, I want double of your spirit because it's your spirit that is able to produce the miracles because your spirit is sanctified wholly unto the Lord. But watch the response of the prophet. He said, you asked for a difficult thing. Where's the remnant that's ready to ask God for some difficult things tonight? Where's the remnant that says no more addiction in this region anymore? Nobody dying anymore by the needle or by a pill. And God said, you asked for a difficult thing. Yes, sir, I did, because I got enough faith to believe for it tonight. He said, you asked for a difficult thing. And watch what he says. He says, when I go, if you can see me, you can get it. But if you take your eyes off me when I go up, you ain't getting it. Now, we got some backslidden preachers that sound a whole lot more like the culture than they do the king that I serve. That are trying to teach that in order to be successful in ministry, that you got to be an original. Just be your own self. Be different. I'm here to tell you to be the same. Watch this. He said, if you can keep your eyes on me. See, we got backslidden preachers that are more busy watching porn than praying. And so they say to their congregation, don't look at me, look at God. It's a cop-out. Paul walked so righteous before the Lord that he could say to his son, Timothy, imitate me. Follow me. Because I know when you follow me, you're following him. I know when you imitate me, you're imitating him. And Elijah said, keep your eyes on me. Though I'm going out in a theatrical exit, there's going to be a whirlwind. There's going to be a fire. There's going to be chariot. If you can keep your eyes on me, Isaac, the only reason I've ever had any success is I set my eyes on excellence and refuse to take it off. I set my eyes on men and women of faith that knew how to flow in the supernatural. And no matter how much naysayer, how much criticism I ever got, I never took my eyes off of the Elijah so that I could pick up the mantle and become the Elisha. You see, watch this. Hebrews says this. Hebrews, the writer of Hebrews has just preserved legacy. Just told us, by faith, Moses did this. By faith, by faith, by faith. And the Bible records the names of people. You know why? God wants to be known through your name. God wants to show off through your life. Ah, oh, just like he said, I'm the God of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob. He wants to be the God through you. And so Hebrews preserves, look at all these people that by faith they did this. Then the writer of Hebrews goes on in Hebrews 13 and says, remember your leaders, Isaac. Remember your leaders, those that spoke the word of God and considered the outcome of their way of life and imitate their faith. Jesus Christ is the same yesterday, today, and forever. 
You see, in the culture, nobody will find nothing wrong with somebody wanting to put a basketball jersey on with somebody's name on the back that's got seven children by seven different women in seven different states. But you begin to honor some preacher and say, I'm a son of honor and got my eyes on and I, I admire. They begin to think you're an adultery. No, they ain't even saved. They don't even understand kingdom. The sons and daughters of legacy get their eyes on the leaders that God has strategically placed in their life, understanding that God's glory flows through his government. So I charge you, son, keep your eyes on the leaders that God placed in your life and look at the outcome. Look at the miracles and the signs and the wonders and the souls. Look at the outcome from the way they lived and imitate it. That word in the Greek literally means this. We teach that at Valor. He's literally saying, copy. Now, I'm not saying that we need to copy another preacher's sound. Though you hang around one long enough, you'll start to sound like one. I'm not saying that we should copy the way they dress. I assure you, I copied this off of nobody tonight. (laughs) Miss Cherise picked out my outfit. Didn't she do good? (laughs) He said, copy their faith. Remember the night that I got ordained the first time, which to me didn't really count because I wasn't really qualified. I just played the game. And the night I got ordained years ago, years, 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 decades ago, I wore my grandfather's cufflinks. My great-grandfather pastored in eastern Kentucky for 36 years, the same church. Then my grandfather pastored that same church for two years. At 54 years old, stood up in front of a church much like this, said, I'm ready to go, sit down, and he died. Whew. Neither one of them ever got ordained. They never met the education requirements. And so when I got ordained, I wore his cufflinks and I carried his Bible. And I remember Pastor Chuck wondering, why doesn't this mean more to me than it should? Why is the feeling absent? This is all I've ever wanted, and I worked so hard to get to this moment. Where's the feeling? And God said, although you might have copied his dress and took on his cufflinks, you didn't copy his character. God had to do a reset in my life. God said, if you want to do what they did, you better be willing to become who they were. You better learn to get up the first thing in the morning, no matter how busy your day is, and start it at the altar with God. You better learn that when everybody else turns against you, when everybody else walks away from your vision, you still start your day with a holy praise. You better learn to get your eyes on some people like Pastor Parsley, that when vocal cord cancer comes and you can't say a word for two years, you still get up every morning out in your driveway and you spin, because spinning is the language of warfare. You get your eyes on the great men and women of God and you imitate their faith so that you can experience that which they experience. Mm. I'm not here to tell you to be different. I'm here to tell you to be a copy. Be a copy of the great faith. Be a copy of the preachers that would not compromise. Be a copycat of the preachers that would stand up, preach what God said to say, to whom God said to say it, and care less what anyone has to think about it. Pick up that mantle. Pick up that mantle tonight. Understand that the sword that I bring is not a trophy. It's symbolic of authority. Pick up the mantle. Pick up the mantle of those that have gone before us. Second Kings, watch this. Elisha, he picked up the mantle that had fallen to the ground. You see, the mantle didn't fall into his hands. It fell to the ground. He had to pick it up. You got to pick it up tonight. You got to pick up what nobody else will pick up. And if you pick it up, I declare by faith tonight, you will kick out cancer just like Wigglesworth. You will receive revelation just like Carter. You will drive out devils like Summerall, and you will roar like Rod Parsley, and you'll make the devil get out of town tonight. 
2 Kings 4, Elisha, he got up and he went into a house with a lady whose son was dead. And your Bible says that, that, that Elisha paced back and forth. By the way, tonight, you know what I'm doing? I'm just copying what I've learned from great legends of the faith. I don't know why preachers always got to take credit like we're putting out an album, like it's our work. We're just passing on God's greatness. I got no problem being an echo of God's goodness tonight. Amen? Amen. Watch this. So Elisha, there's this woman, and her son is dead, and he paces the floor, and he puts his hands on that boy. And your Bible says that that boy sneezes seven times and then comes back to life. Why did he sneeze? Well, I'm not ashamed to tell you that my pastor taught me why he sneezed. A sneeze is nothing more than an irritant. He had to sneeze the death out of him. You see, the life that God had on the prophet, when it touched that dead body, it irritated the very spirit of death, and he sneezed it out. I've come to tell you tonight, pick it up. Pick up the mantle, and you're about to become the irritant to death in this city. You're about to become the irritant to addiction in this city. You're about to see Ironton sneeze out the death that has a hold on the entire generation. You're about to see the grave sneeze out the death of all the children that are going into the grave prematurely. You're about to sneeze out of abortion is going to stop in the city because you are the irritant to the death in the region. And then you know what he said? And the boy sneezed seven times and came back alive and he told that woman, pick him up. Tonight, Pastor Isaac, you're here with a message to Ironton, Ohio. You're not here to bury the dead. You're here to raise the dead. Oh, come on, God's people. We're here to become an irritant, and this place ain't ever going to be the same. I declare by faith tonight, you're about to look some mothers in the eye and the sons are dying with addiction. You're just going to breathe on them and say, now pick that baby up. Pick that boy up. There's an anointing that's coming on you tonight. You'll walk into King's Daughters Hospital and when you walk in, death has to walk out. Because you learn to pick it up. You learn to pick it up. And because you pick up the mantle, you can tell a hurting world, pick up your dead circumstance. Pick up your dead situation. You're here to irritate powerless religion. You're here to irritate purposeless routine. You're here to irritate pointless response. You're here to irritate passionless praise. You're a son of legacy, carrying a mantle, an irritant to death itself. Speak boldly. Speak with faith. Never forget the sword that's placed in your hands tonight. But watch this. Elijah has gone to heaven. Elisha is now the man. But he never forgot Elijah in the same way that Joshua never forgot Moses. But Joshua was a servant of Moses, and so that's why God selected him. Because serving is the language of selection. When God's looking to select somebody to give a sword, he looks for a servant. Amen. Watch this. In chapter 6, it says, The sons of the prophet said to Elisha, Please notice where we live under supervision. First off, just because you pick up the mantle doesn't mean that you forfeit the right to live under supervision. Live a supervised, accountable life. The son said, we live under your, under your supervision, under your covering. And the place that we're ministering, it's too small. Please let us go to the Jordan where we can each get a log and can build ourselves a place to live there. The prophet said, go. One of them said, Please come with us. If you don't come with me, I'm not going. Tonight, as you pick up the mantle, you make sure that the presence of your covering walks with you or you don't go. 
you make a decision tonight as you pick up the mantle and you carry this vision of Impact Church in Ironton, Ohio, you go nowhere alone. You go with your team. Because here's the reality. The devil might get one lion, but he can't handle us all together. So they go to build. They go to work with the blessing of their covering. And then what happens? As they're working, one of them drops the axe head into the water. And they said to the prophet, prophet, I've dropped the head of the axe in the water and it was burrowed. And the prophet said, well, where did it fall? And they went to where it fell. And the prophet said, now pick it up. There's going to be times in your life that you drop the head of the axe. There's been moments in my life because of arrogance and out of ignorance. There have been moments when I've dropped it. And I'm here to tell you tonight, when you drop it, you run to the prophet. You run to your covering and you pick it back up. You have an advocate and his name is Jesus. I said his name is Jesus. Now that axe was borrowed. It wasn't his. And tonight that sword, it's borrowed. It's entrusted to you. Your anointing and your gifting, it did not come from you and it will not end with you. Honor the gift that God's given you. Honor the sword that God gives to you tonight. They had a decision to make when they lost the head of the axe. They could have continued to just It's not the first time I've out preached a mic. <laughs> they could have took the axe without the head and continued to beat the side of the tree. But they would have just had action with no activity. They would have been busy without any production. They had enough wisdom to know, I got to get the axe back on here. God hasn't placed you here to be another preacher that simply has a sound but no production. You're here with that sword, not as a trophy, but as a toil to go to work. Tonight, we celebrate. Tomorrow, you begin to sweat and labor and work. You be that son that says, I'm full of faith and what we have is not big enough. Let me go to work with your blessing and with your covering. Tonight, I submit to you, Pastor Isaac, pick it up. Pick up the mantle, pick up the dead, pick up the axe, pick up the resources that God's placed in your hand, and go change the world. You're a world changer tonight. Yeah. Tonight, heaven rejoices. Tonight, Pastor Isaac, people from all around the world are watching. Great legends of the faith, Dr. John Avanzini talked to me this morning, watching from Indonesia. People all over the world celebrating that tonight God gives his very best. For it's been prophesied that God would do something in this region. Tonight, you're the instrument. You're the instrument of God. Tonight, we celebrate the fulfillment of prophecy. Tonight, we celebrate Pastor Parsley praying for years for God to put right here on the Ohio River between Ohio and Kentucky an extension of that which is happening in Columbus, Ohio. Tonight, you are an answer to that prayer. Will you pick it up? Will you pick it up and hold it, guard it and preserve it and protect it? All the days of your life. Will you keep your eyes on greatness? In your inexperience, look to experience. In your lack of knowledge, look to wisdom. And God will not withhold anything from you. I bless you tonight in the name of the Father, the Son Jesus, and the Holy Spirit. Would all God's people stand with me?
Pastor Isaac and Micah, this right here, right there. Now, you know in World Harvest Church, we got the spot where Dr. Summerall passed the sword to Pastor Parsley and miracles upon miracles have happened. Well, here at Impact, that's our spot. From this spot right here, I have laid my hands on hundreds of people. From this spot right here, I have seen disease dissolve. From this spot right here, I've seen people born again in the twinkling of an eye. I've seen addiction break from right here. It's now your spot. And it's your hands that will reach out to the hurting. So before we pass the sword, I'm going to ask Pastor Chuck to come alongside of me. Would you honor this mighty, mighty man of God? I'm going to ask Miss Cherise Conley to come alongside of me. Would you honor this tremendous, incredible woman of God? And before we pass the mantle, we're going to pray for God to give you double of everything he's ever given to us. Awesome. Pastor Chuck, I'm going to give you a few moments to speak into your son and thank you for letting us have him. Thank you for thinking more about kingdom than anything else. Thank you for the investment, the support, and we look forward to working together. You know, uh, when we go through a story, when uh, Becky uh, thought she would never have a, a child and uh, was prophesied that what was going to be birthed in her would be uh, amazingly used of God, who would ever, you know, dream that that person who prophesied it was Rod Parsley's mother, who prophesied what would happen. She had no idea that Gary and Becky had just received the news that they would have no children. It wouldn't happen. And being devastated by the disease that was in her and the removal of her ovaries were right there on the horizon for the following week, if I'm saying the story correct, right? Who would ever believe that God said, I'll take that. <laughs> it's okay. I love it when it's adverse. I love it when it's impossible. As a matter of fact, the more impossible it is, the more glory I'm going to get. I believe that. And I believe that we're seeing evidence of what God promised 20 some years ago. It would seem impossible, and it should. But with God, all things are possible. As a matter of fact, it's good that it's impossible. Because now no one's going to get the credit but him. And I believe there's an anointing that rests upon him. We know that. We've known that since he was 10, maybe 12, 14, 16, watching him grow up. We know he had a, the gift and the anointing to do what he's about ready to embark upon. He is anointed and gifted by God for this moment. And we are so thrilled. And I've been referred to as a father. It must mean I'm getting older. But anyway, I've been referred to a father a couple of times. But the good thing about a father is not like a teacher. The teachers, of course, are phenomenal. And teachers are, God needs more great teachers. But teachers want to impart knowledge and, and give good things to others so they can grow and become more. And a father wants to do that as well. But a father is one more dynamic that a teacher doesn't necessarily have. And that's a father wants to see his sons go further than he ever did. And that's what we want to see from Isaac. Let's, let's bring mom and dad a little closer. Come on, mom, dad. Come on, come on. We're going to stretch forth our hands and believe for a double portion. And the greatest prayer warrior I know is going to pray as we put our hands together and believe. Before we pray, we, we, we were getting, trying to get here, you know, and uh, hit a lot of obstacles to get here tonight. And so I heard Bishop, first of all, I told him, I said, don't listen, I'm coming to support my, my kids. I'm not talking because, you know, I'm not a preacher. But as we were getting here, 
we just hit every obstacle there was. And I couldn't figure out why until I got here. And when you said that you've had obstacles and you said there's been naysayers that have tried to stop the word of God. And when you follow the call of God on your life, everybody said, well, that's it. And so I was sitting over there and I said, I'm telling you, I'm, you know, like I said, you know, I didn't already told him. I'm just going to stand there. And while I was over there, here's what I heard God say. He said, you let them know that you will stand like Moses. He said, you'll stand like Moses. He said, and when God gave Moses a demand, Moses who stuttered, Moses who people counted out, he said, well, you want me to go back to Pharaoh who's been tormenting my people, you want me to go to Kentucky and you want me to stand there and release a word that you gave me years ago. And so Moses said, well, who should I send? Sent me. And I love what God said without hesitation, without doubt, without backing up, and without kneeling down, he said, tell him I am sent me. Tell him I am sent me. And for years, I was like, what does that mean? And God said, because all he said was just go tell him I am. Because he knew that the moment he said, I am sent me, he knew something was going to shift. Right? And so he said, okay. And God began to speak to me. And he said, when they go back and say, when he says, I am sent me, he understands that what was, was going to turn back to the original state in which I had intended it to be. So what you see now, Bishop said it, double, double. Double, double. The moment you say it, God is going to honor your word. You're not going to have to start from the beginning. You're going to start where the man of God left off. And here's what God said to me sitting over there. You'll start where this man of God left off. But I remember years ago sitting in an executive conference room and across the table was Dr. Rod Parsley. And I remember you sitting there saying, I'll serve you, sir. I'll give up my summer, sir. I'll do whatever it takes, sir. I'll go where you tell me, sir. I'll serve you, sir. And God sent you to Columbus, Ohio to Valor Christian College, to World Harvest Church, so that you could see what's coming. Do you understand? So you could see, Micah, when it was tough, and you still stayed. When everybody said, well, why are you there? Just go ahead, and you still stayed. He said, no, I want you to see what's going on around here. Because what you're getting ready to receive is much greater than where you came from. So when you stand in that pulpit and you release a word and someone says, well, by what authority? You just speak up and say, I am sent me. All right. All right. Are you ready? You want double. It'll cost you everything.
to pick it up means to let go of a lot of other stuff. A double portion of anointing. A double portion of faith. A double portion of provision. A double portion of wisdom and knowledge. A double portion of favor. You'll never know lack. You'll never hear the words no. Tonight, the three of us lay our hands in faith and release double. 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 In the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Father, take everything that you've ever done through us, everything you've ever given to us, and double it in the name of Jesus. Double his faith. Double it, Father. A double portion of the anointing. A double portion of the ability to preach conviction. A double portion of the healing ministry. A double portion of salvations of those that will cry out, save me, O oh God. A double portion of marriages that will be restored and will stay together. A double portion of those that will be set free from addiction. A double portion of those that will be set free from sexual confusion. A double portion. A double portion. And Father, we bless his precious wife, Micah, with a double portion of patience and protection. Father, a double portion that she might not grow weary. That you, O oh God, would protect her ears, silence the critics. You'll bless her. You'll bless her. You'll preserve her. I hear the Lord saying, great acceleration, Micah. Great acceleration. God says, I'm about to turn it up. God says, you've been walking, but you're about to run. I'm turning it up because I know you're in the spiritual shape. God said, I'm cranking up the dial tonight. God said, you're not just a helpmate. You are the help of God. God said there's an anointing on you. My good God Almighty, God says that there, there's going to be daughters that come from you of the faith. God said there's a spiritual lineage that's going to be connected to you. God said I'm going to restore godly motherhood in the kingdom through your life. God said, I'm going to teach mothers how to be mothers again and wives how to be wives again through your life. I just heard God say that as I was preaching for Isaac to copy and to imitate the faith of others, that God will one day say to young women, look to Micah and become a copy of her purity and her faith. <laughs> Glory to God. I bless you as parents. Mm. I bless you as parents. I bless you as parents. Father, I pray the angels you've given to my precious Trinity, I pray you'd send even more to this precious family that would minister to them. That would come alongside their precious baby in the middle of the night and whisper the goodness of God. Hmm. See, because I know legacy, because I know what God has done, I know what to pray for God to do. In the 70s in Catlicksburg, Kentucky, 
people came outside of a little church and they looked up into the sky and traffic was stopped right along US 23 as they spotted angels dancing. And I declare by faith that the angels will never stop dancing over your family. you. All right. Are you ready? Are you ready? Then walk up to me to what was my platform and is now yours. Come, you stand right here. Facing me. Now I'm going to ask your incredible pastoral staff, Pastor Jared, Pastor Kevin, Pastor Angie, Pastor David, I want all of you up here right behind them. Praise God for these, look at these guys working so hard tonight. Sacrificial servants. There she is. Come here. You can get somebody else to take pictures. This was our baby, and we now trust it to you. These are some of the greatest people that God ever put on the planet. Take care of them. When I wrote down the vision... I didn't write down what was in my head. I wrote down what he said. It's yours to protect. You will preach Christ. You'll bring community back to the house of God. And you won't change the culture. You'll be the culture. My precious wife has sacrificially served alongside of me. She knows what it's like to have the lonely nights. She knows what it's like to hear the criticism. She knows what's in front of you. There's no one more fit to ask God to bless you and protect you like this woman can tonight. Amy, would you honor Micah and ask God to bless her and protect her in the same ways he's done for you? God, I thank you for this couple, God. I thank you for this precious wife, this precious mother, God. May you protect her, God. Because sometimes as wives, we just kind of feel like you're in the background, but really you're not. You're in the front. God, I just pray that she's the biggest supporter for her husband. God, I just pray protection and safety over her life, over their son's life, God. Give her strength through difficult times. Give her peace during the storms. God, just give her intercessors to pray on her behalf when there are times that she's not even going to be able to pray on her own, God. And God, I just pray that you send down angels for protection at all times because the devil's always going to be attacking your family and your child. And so I just pray, God, that you give her wisdom, guidance. God, give her spiritual mothers, sisters, that she can reach out to difficult time. I'm telling you, Micah, you have one right behind you. <laughs> so God, just bless her through her commitment to the call for her servant heart. In Jesus' name. Tonight, this sword is a sword of legacy. When you walk through the doors of World Harvest Church, Valor Christian College, when you said yes to serving Pastor Parsley 
you forever linked yourself to this legacy of the faith. When you linked to this legacy, you learned from this legacy. You learned the gospel. You learned Pentecost and the purity of it. And because we've watched you live legacy, we know you will leave legacy. So tonight, we give you the sword, we give you the house, and we cheer for you in the name of Jesus. Stay right there, pastoral team. Don't run off and leave him. Would you thank God for the beauty of the moment? I hereby install you as the pastor of Impact Church, Ironton, Ohio. You're the answer to our prayer. Pastor Isaac, it's now your church. <laughs> a bunch of stuff that I was going to say, but uh, I knew this was going to be a, an incredible moment, but I'm kind of at a loss for words, to be honest with you. Um, but in just a short few sentences, um, I want to declare over this house that the greatest days of this house are not in the past, but they're right in front of us. And I also want to release over this house that this house will become a house of miracles. I want to speak that the same miracles that we saw at the Pool of Bethesda would happen in this house every single day. I'm, I'm reminded of that story of the Pool of Bethesda, of how the man that was sick for 38 years, waiting for his turn to be healed, how many miracles did he see, did he witness? And I, I believe that we are going to be just like that man that sat at the pool of Bethesda and watched miracle after miracle after miracle after miracle be manifested right in front of his eyes. Um, so we're excited to be your all's pastors. Um, I'm kind of speechless, to be honest with you. Um, but we're honored and we're excited. And I can promise you this, that Ironton is going to experience Jesus. Because what God is going to do in this house and in this ministry, people in Ironton will look at this and say, it had to be God. That's what Jesus is going to do in this community. And so if you want to be a part of a Jesus movement, then these doors are ready for you. Not for a movement to exalt a man or an organization, but to exalt King Jesus. And so we believe that King Jesus will be glorified in Ironton, Ohio. And so we just speak right now a banner of Jesus over this community. We just release Jesus over every hollow, over every street, over every alley, over every business, over every educational system, over every church in Ironton. May Jesus be glorified. Holy Spirit, we release you right now in the name of Jesus to break through, break out, and break over. Miracles, signs, and wonders happen again in Ironton, Ohio. We speak that in no other name.
exalt the mighty name of Jesus. And so if you want to see Jesus be glorified in this city, in this region, I want you to give Jesus a shout of praise. One, two, three. Come on, lift up King Jesus in this house. King Jesus be glorified. In Jesus' name. In Jesus' name. Pastor, we have one more presentation. Would you welcome the president of the Ironton Ministerial Alliance, Ms. Katrina Keith, to the platform. Good evening, everyone. Um, what a wonderful night. Not knowing this moment in time, God was preparing me a long time ago. 20 years in December have I been laboring in Ironton, Ohio, tilling up the ground, rebuilding the walls. When God had called me to run for office, he said, rebuild the walls, Pastor. Rebuilding the walls is not pretty. It's not hanging the curtains. It's not picking out the wall paint, but it is laboring. It is building the foundation. And Isaac, the foundation is built. Do you hear me? We have been laying and praying and laboring in this community. It is time. For such a time as this, you have been called to this place. God is putting people into position. Ironton was developed by John Campbell, which was an abolitionist that believed in God. Over the years, the enemy slid in. Money and power took over. They called it Little Chicago here. And you can imagine what took place here. But 20 years ago, God called a little girl to come in here. And we started tilling up the ground. We started rebuilding. And we labored for you to come. In the name of Jesus, we thank you. And we are excited about what God has in store for you in this town. Amen? But on behalf of the Ironton Area Ministerial Association, we just want to celebrate you, Isaac Carpenter. As pastor of Impact Church, Ironton, Ohio, tend the flock of God that is in your charge. And when the chief shepherd appears, you will win the crown of glory that never fades away. Installed this day, December 30th, 2023. Amen. And I'm going to pull several duties tonight. God has taken me out of Ironton and placed me in the county. And we are doing a big work in the county. Dr. Colton Copley is a commissioner here in Ironton, Ohio, in the Lawrence County, which is another Christ Temple member. God is raising up people in Ironton, Ohio to do a mighty work. And so on behalf of the commissioners, Dr. Colton Copley, Deanna Holliday, and Freddie Hayes, it is an honor of the Lawrence County commissioners to recognize outstanding achievements within Lawrence County. Whereas the Lawrence County commissioners recognize Mr. Isaac Carpenter, during the installation service as the new pastor and shepherd of Impact Church located in Ironton, Ohio. Whereas Mr. Isaac Carpenter was officially installed as the new pastor on Friday, December 30th, 2023. Whereas the Lawrence County Commissioners understands that with every great man of God, there is a spiritual woman that supports him. Whereas the Lawrence County Commissioners also recognizes his wife, Mrs. Micah Carpenter. Whereas we welcome you to our great county and wish you well in all endeavors the Lord leads you to. Now, therefore, be it resolved this 30th day of December, 2023, 2022, sorry, the Lawrence County Commissioners do hereby recognize and honor Pastor and First Lady 
Isaac and Micah Carpenter. May you positively touch the lives of our constituents and lead them to the fullness of who they are in Christ Jesus. Signed, your Lawrence County Commissioners. <laughs> And Miss Micah, the Women of Spirit, I believe is here tonight. We thank you. We have watched God do a shift in her. Probably around October, November, we meet monthly. And there's a shift that took place in this young woman. And as we would meet, we just looked at her and saw how God began to change something inside of you. He began to prepare you for such a time as this, Micah. So know that we women of spirit at Christ Temple Church, you are our sister, you are our daughter, and we are here for your support. We are always here to lift you up, and we will watch and see what God does through you. Amen? Amen. Thank you for coming tonight. Would you celebrate one more time this man of God? This church has never been in a greater position than it's in tonight. So for the first time, and I hope as your bishop, you have me back, and not for the last time. Together, me and my wife, who started this thing, and you and your wife, who's going to finish this thing, reach out our hands together. Let me get somebody to hold the sword for us. Ms. Shree, excuse me. Thank you. We reach our hands together towards this congregation. We look at these beautiful people. Some of them, Pastor Isaac, you haven't even got a chance to meet yet. Like my beautiful friend Danielle sitting back back there in the blonde hair and glasses that I see. Your brother Lance over there that your biggest fan. <laughs> These precious people. Tonight we reach out our hands towards you, the people of God, and we ask God to bless you. And we thank God for you being a part of this historic night that heaven will preserve forever. We thank you for your shouts of praise to our King, the King of kings and the Lord of lords, Jesus Christ. We thank you for being kingdom-minded. We thank you for coming alongside and believing for greater days, not only in Ironton, but in Ashland and in Huntington, this entire region. And so we bless you in the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. May he bless you. May the greatest season of your life be right in front of you. In the name of Jesus and all of God's people said, Amen. God bless you. Thank you for coming tonight.